Here is a set of problems that gives us a way to review the product and the quotient rules that you would have learned in section 2.3 and kind of puts a little different twist on the way it's asked. In a perfect world, you would get the AP test and they would give you two functions and say use the product rule or use the quotient rule. Unfortunately, that's not the case. A lot of times they won't tell you which rule to use or they won't even give you functions. And that's what you're dealing with when you look at these problems here. What, what they tell you is that we have f and g that are functions. We do not know what the functions are. We don't know if they're polynomial, if they're trig base. We know nothing about them. But we do have a set of values. We know what happens when we put 3 into the function of f. We know what happens when we put 3 into the derivative of f. We know what happens when we put 3 into the function of g and 3 into the derivative of g. We have a series of constants. Sometimes it's presented in a list, so if you look right here you see a list. Other times it could be presented in more of a table fashion, but that's what they're giving you. They're giving you a set of data for generic functions f and g. Then they're defining new functions. They're defining h, which is right here, as f of x times g of x, and they're defining k, right here, as f of x divided by g of x. And finally you get to what's being asked. And what you're being asked to do is find h prime of 3. What that means is find the derivative of h and then put 3 in, and then find k prime of 3, which is the derivative of k putting 3 in. So we're going to start with h prime of 3. And you have to look at the way that h is defined. Right now it is defined as the multiplication of two functions. So we know from our rules of derivatives that if I want to take the derivative of something that is made up of a product, we have to use the product rule. We have to be very generic though because we don't know what f and g are. So when I take h prime, we think of our product rule as the first times the derivative of the second. We're going to write it as f of x times g prime of x. I'm going to call f be my first function and g I'll call my second function. So first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Nice thing about the product rule is if you flip flop these it doesn't matter because it's being added. Unlike the quotient rule we have to be a lot more careful about your order. Now we've taken the derivative. It's very generic but we have the derivative. We want to plug a 3 in. So what we're actually finding is f of 3 times g prime of 3 plus g of 3 times f prime of 3. That's where the chart that I circled off to the left comes into play. I know all these values. I'm reading my chart. f of 3, I'm replacing it with a 5. g prime of 3, looking at the bottom of the list, is replaced with a negative 1. g of 3 is replaced with a 1 fourth and f prime of 3 is replaced with a negative 2. Now it's a matter of just doing your arithmetic. I get negative 5 plus negative a half, which is negative 5 and a half. You can write negative 5.5. You can write negative 11 over 2. You can just write negative 5 and a half. So you have this data off to the side, and that's where what you use at the end of the problem. Now that you've seen that one, hopefully it makes the second question a little easier, k prime of 3. We have to look at the way k is defined. k is defined as a division of two functions, f of x divided by g of x. So hopefully you look at this and right away say, wait a second, I need to use a quotient rule because we are dividing two functions. So I'm going to do this at the bottom of the screen. Remember your quotient rule is bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. And it's the original bottom squared. It's not the derivative squared. And your order is very important here because of that subtraction. If you flip-flop the top, you'll negate your answer. Now I'm going through and I'm putting 3 in everywhere. I have to put it in five places this time. Just to save space, I'm just going to kind of show you that I'm going to put 3 here, here, and so on. Again, using the table of values that's uh, on the left side of your screen. So g of 3 is 1 fourth f prime of 3 is negative 2 minus f of 3 is 5 g prime of 3 is negative 1 and then g of 3 is 1 fourth I have to square it so I will get 1 16th if you want to put 1 fourth in parentheses and then square it so I'm going to do a little simplifying on the top and you're welcome to use your calculator to do this you get negative a half plus 5 over 1 16th. Now it's a little easier if you are doing it by hand to put it all into a fraction form. So 5 plus a negative a half would be 10 halves minus 1 half, so that's 9 halves. 
I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, 16 over 1. And again, you're welcome to use your calculator for this. You will have calculator access on your test and quiz. I'm going to reduce this since I'm not working with a calculator right now. And I get 72. So here is a way you do two of your rules. Two of your rules that now you should know pretty comfortably, but a very different spin on it. And this is the type of question you'll see on the AP test. This is the type of question you'll see on your quiz over the first half of Chapter 2. And you'll see it show up again on your test over Chapter 2. So being comfortable to manipulate generically is a huge skill to help you.